There you go. You wanted your R and B from the nineties. This is it. This, this it is. It doesn't get better. This is nineties R and B. Timeless. Yeah. This, this, this is timeless. So good. Yeah. yeah. This yeah. makes me just want to put my feet up. The old brandy and Mo- Coke. Moesha. Yeah. Do you remember, yeah, Mo- Moesha. remember when she yes. was before she became brandy? She's I Moesha. certainly do. Moesha. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Brandy a bit of mace there. Um, it is Rory Jennings' birthday as well, by the way, today, everyone. Happy birthday. So feel free to send in happy birthday messages. No, people, are, people, are, people are only send me in horrible hateful. stuff. <laughs> yeah. Horrible, yeah. hateful. Hateful yeah. abuse. <laughs> you send that in as well. So. Yeah, send both in. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We'll, we'll read out both. Uh, text topic uh, this afternoon is who is the hardest footballer ever in the Premier League? Um, a lot of you texting in this one. No, now Nick has said Neil uh, Razor Ruddock. Yeah. N- Razor Ruddock was hard. Yes. There's, there's no two ways about it. Um, this one from Russell Earl says Wimbledon had many hard men uh, Vinny, Harford, Fashta Bash Why? Man, all of those were in the same team it's true mm. Wise and Harrison but the real scrapper was Ben Thatcher yeah Ben Thatcher well that's Pedro Mendes wasn't we it? spoke about that didn't Pedro we Pedro Mendes naughty naughty, that, that's naughty. unbelievable you know, that's not even hard that is that's just naughty that challenge was yeah. the worst challenge I've ever seen if you haven't seen it just please just google right now on YouTube Ben Thatcher Pedro Mendes mm. then he, then he did he go to court for it? I think it became think more when, of an it, issue. It became it did, bigger than it? football, didn't it? Yeah. It did. Naughty, naughty, naughty. All right, phone lines are open. 03717 Get in touch. We're talking uh, who's going to be the next England manager. Uh, Dean, Liverpool fan, has got in touch. Uh, Dean, what are you thinking? Who? Is it Eddie Howe or Bastia? <laughs> uh, guys, great show as, uh, as always. Cheers. And uh, Roy clearly uh, likes to create debate with some of his comments. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you, know, you know what yeah. Roy's like. <laughs> very, very funny, honestly. I mean, no, I, I'm, I agree that Eddie has uh, the standout character and, and the guy, he's, he's, he's a level or two above Potter, right? But um, a couple of things, right? I think English managers have had opportunities in recent years. I think it's got a lot better for English managers. Mm. I think you made the point that um, you know, Villa had Stevie G. Um, you know, Stevie G went, and you know, Emery came in, and look what look what he's done. He's a top top manager, right? Uh, Lamps at Chelsea. Tuchel comes in, wins the Champions League with same squad, right? Potter at Brighton. You could say he was successful there, but the Zerbi comes in and is scoring <laughs> left, right, and centre, right? So uh, you know, I mean, O'Neill, I like him a lot. He's a, he's actually a very talented manager. He's no way near qualified to be a Liverpool manager yet, right? But he might be in the future. Arnie Slot, good point. You know, winning the 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 area de Vizy with Feyenoord, is that really a massive achievement? But I'd, I'd say there you probably have to look at Edwards to see that. Uh, you know, Michael Edwards probably seen something about the way they play to uh, to 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 uh, see that he's a good fit for Liverpool. But we'll see, right? We'll see on that one. But if you broaden it slightly and talk about British managers rather than just English ones, mm. David Moyes was at Man United, did nothing, right? He probably didn't get enough time, but, you know, they didn't really do much. And then Brendan Rodgers at, at my team, right? I mean, he was there, he almost won the league, didn't quite do it. Klopp came in and, you know, won everything. So, you know, I, I, I want British managers and English managers to do well, but... I think we've seen quite a few given an opportunity. And Eddie Howe himself at Newcastle now, I think he's a phenomenal manager. And I think he will win things left, right and centre. But, you know, I hope he ends up at England. Yeah. Why are they so far behind, Dean? You know, me and Rui often talk about the Spanish managers coming through. Um, and there seems to be so many. Like, I think Cesc Fabregas is going to be one of those soon that we talk about as being an elite manager. You mentioned that they are getting the opportunities at big clubs as well. I mean, you mentioned Brendan Rodgers there at Liverpool and I think we have to chuck Wayne Rooney's name in there as well. He seems to always get an opportunity everywhere. So they're getting opportunities, but they're not doing anything. Not, why are they so far behind? Yeah, I mean, it's a great question. I don't know, to be honest with you. I don't know about the coaching setup here, but, you know, I think some of them, I mean, Potter, Potter was out in Sweden, wasn't he, right? Mm. So he had some come outside experience, but I think these guys need to go broaden their horizons I mean, you know, I mean, Rogers was under Mourinho, so you'd think he would have picked up some stuff there. Um, but they seem to be obsessed with possession and possession stats rather than being efficient. You know, I mean, I don't care if a team passes the ball around 50 times at the back and they get, that, you know, their possession starts 60, 70%. Who cares, right? It's about being efficient, being effective, and actually winning things. And I think we've become bogged down in technical football, just passing it around for the sake of it. I think we need to get back to actually, yeah, pass it when it's suitable. But it's not about, I think Shankar used to, or Paisley used to talk about, it's not about short passes or long passes. It's about the right pass, right, at the right time. And I think that's, that's the key thing that we need. It's as simple as that. But maybe, maybe they're emphasizing too much kind of tippy-tappy, passing it around all the time and not, not, not focusing on 
let's just be effective and try and win games, right? I, I don't know. Maybe I'm oversimplifying it. Dean, with all of that in mind, do you think that the next England manager should be English or do you think that we should admit that our managerial pool isn't quite deep enough and we should go fishing in uh, foreign climbs? Yeah, no, I, I, I want an English manager, right? I mean, I want Eddie Howe and I think the FA should just break the bank and I, I don't think they'll do that, right? Because he's got a big contract and everything else, but... I think I don't know if he's gonna if he's able to push out and push you know if that makes it easier. But you know he 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 is a standout manager. The way his teams play, they they play the right ball. They're attacking. They they're efficient. They do the right things, right? And I I think he's a phenomenal coach. Um, I think he's the standout character. If we can get him, great. If we can't, then I don't. I don't but Dean, he's only the standout candidate. To... He's only the standout candidate if we don't bring in foreign managers, isn't he? He's a standout English manager. He is, but I'd, I prefer to have an English manager as first choice, right? But if if we can't get him, I don't really want Potter because I think we're just going to go backwards. We're just going to be – we're not going to score goals. It's going to be more of what we've just seen. Um, and it's just frustrating everyone, to be honest with you. I don't think he's done enough to, to convince me. When he was at Chelsea, it, you know, Chelsea have good – whatever we say about their squad and transition and everything else, they've got good players. I thought he massively underachieved, even with that group, Right. Um, I know he's dealing with lots of things. I don't think he can, I don't think he can deal with the pressure of, of that kind of level of job, right, where you're constantly under scrutiny. Um, so I don't know. In that situation, I don't mind going to a foreign manager as long as it's a foreign manager who is an elite manager who will get the best out of our players and we play attacking football. But I don't want someone just coming in just because they've got a big name. You know, you know what I mean? Agreed, agreed. What about Lee Carsley? I know, look, he's Irish, isn't he? I mean, but he, but he was born in England, Lee Carsley. He played for England in the 21s. It's like Andy Townsend. So, yeah, he's a bit Andy Townsend. Tony Cascarino. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, he's a, he's a bit like that. What about him? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. If he's, I don't, I haven't seen, I mean, the under 21s have been doing okay, I think, right? Mm, they have done, he's, yeah. And I know Ireland, Ireland were after Carsley, weren't they? And so he's, he's a highly regarded coach. If he's, if he's someone who can do the job, then yeah, give him a chance. Why not? Right? If he's actually, you know, decent at his job, who cares about his name and recognition and all the rest of it? Give it to him. Yeah. And if it doesn't work out, go out and get someone, you know, bigger and, and, and maybe better later. Right? Yeah, just for the record, he won the under twenty one championship. Didn't um, concede a goal along yeah, the way. From, as well. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of those players go. now in the squad, Anthony Gordon, etc., have played under Lee Carsey, so he knows him very, very well. Dean, great call, my man. Appreciate it. Thank you very much, uh, Dean Liverpool fan there. Good call, that. Mm, very yeah, interesting. Very sensible. Mm, very yeah, interesting. You... I um, I think it's so difficult, isn't it? Because we know, we know that the England managers, the English managers, aren't as good as the foreign managers. So I think we have to basically accept that we're going to have a weaker manager and go English or think that we can get a better manager, a better tactician, a better track record and go foreign. You know, with where England are now, though, mm. right, again, the FIFA rankings have just been updated. I think England are fourth now or third. Um, I don't read too much into no. that. But England, no, but, but England are a top footballing nation now. No but, doubt. But, no doubt. Top players. C can we afford just to accept that we're going to have to kind of go English and it's not as good as the foreign managers, knowing that we've got the best group of players that I think I can ever remember mm. from an England squad perspective? Is, is it just... We're accepting that now. Well, so what's your fear here? That we're going to waste what is a golden generation yes. of, of talent on a, on not a golden manager? On not a golden manager. I, I think that there is a chance that we could do that, but I also think it's a price worth paying. I think that I just don't see a world in which it's wrong, in which it's the correct shout to, to appoint a foreign manager as England manager. Particularly particularly when we're talking... We're, t we're talking like, what, Jurgen Klopp, Thomas Tuchel, Mauricio Pochettino? Mm -hmm. No, that doesn't chime with what I want for the England manager at all. Jose Mourinho? He chimes with me. I can chime with everything. All right, let's get an update. Uh, England take on the West Indies from Trent Bridge with John Norman. John, obviously you look, you watch your football as well, John. Would you yeah. accept uh, a non-English manager? Do you know what I'm with? I'm with Rory. I just I kind of just feel like you're cheating. Yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. it just doesn't feel right. And um, I was thinking this the other day. You know, if it thing is, people will say, okay, well, what would you prefer? Um, England to win a major tournament with a foreign coach or not to win a major football tournament with an English coach but there's no guarantee of that is there you can't ever guarantee mm. that if they have a foreign coach they'll win anything they never won anything with a foreign coach before so um, John yeah, why it is it more allowed though right. John in other sports like cricket current England coach is not English rugby um, well, it, it is allowed it, we have done it but it's not it's not sneered on as much is it I don't think uh, agreed, agreed. Mm. But if you go outside of England, um, 
I mean, I suppose it's just part of the. It's, yeah, it's. it's uh, personally, I, I, just <laughs> don't, I, I just don't think people I care agree, as much. I agree. I agree. With I, you. I, I think, think English football should be English. Football goes to the heart of more people in this country than any other sport does. So it's just one of those, one of those. And I think there's more choice in football as well. You know, True. football is a massive game. It's more of a global game than football or rugby, uh, rather than cricket or rugby. So um, I, I don't think it's like for like. But essentially, football is. You make your football decisions based on your heart rather than your head. Mm. And yeah. Yeah. It, just it just doesn't quite feel right for me. But that's, that's not to say that if, you know, we, we got a foreign coach and they won the, the Euros or the World Cup, you'd care because you'd just be so delighted England won, wouldn't you? So True. True. There you go. How England getting on, John? Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they're getting on pretty well, actually. It's just getting to that point where West Indies are getting a bit desperate to take a wicket because they... Lead England by 141. You can add four to that, actually. As Joe Root just reaches for a wide delivery from uh, Shamar Joseph and really just caresses this ball past the cover field for four. Uh, so he moves to 19 and the score 186 for three. The lead 145. Um, we've got about, what have we got? We've got about, f- light permitting, we've got about 45 minutes. And you could say that the next 45 minutes are going to decide the outcome of this match because if England get to stumps and they haven't lost a wicket, uh, an additional one, then the lead is going to be up around, what, 180? I'm not sure the West Indies are going to chase down much more than 300, and that's if everything goes their way. So uh, they need a wicket through the West Indies, and, and they're more than capable. Uh, they've, bowled, so they've bowled all right. They've bowled in passage as well, but uh, the ball is getting a little older. It's getting a little easier to bat, but it is also gloomy here. So it's been a fascinating test match. Uh, there'll be a couple of twists and turns, no doubt, tonight and tomorrow. But England are happy with the two sides. They're leading now 146, 187 for three. On AM, on DAB, via the TalkSport app and on your smart speaker. TalkSport.